let's look at just one of the methods that I use when I'm doing a brand strategy with a client. These days, I love doing these before we get into any of the marketing, the messaging, funnel development, website, wireframing and wording, all of that stuff. Deciding what's gonna go into the copy, even planning a promotional calendar, because this is really a great way to look at and think about your business, is really looking at a couple of different strategy models that can help you be strategic about what direction are you taking yourselves? How can you separate yourself from the market and the competition? How can you position yourselves in terms of value and price? So there's all different kinds of models. The model that we're gonna talk about today is one that I almost always pick to use with my clients and we call it the clock model. So when you think about your business and you're trying to strategize where you wanna put your time and your energy, this is a great framework to put yourself in. Think about your customers being in the center of a circle and looking out from that circle, what are the experiences or the touch points that they have with you? There's three primary areas. It's the pre-purchase experiences, the actual purchase experience, and then the post-purchase experience. And different companies focus more in different areas. As a matter of fact, companies that do really, really well pick one of these areas and they let that be the bulk of their attention, their efforts, and their investment. Now, it doesn't mean they don't do anything in the other areas, but they say, we're going to master this part of that relationship. So for an example, Nike would be known for being really focused on pre-purchase. Everybody knows their branding. Everybody knows their tagline. When a commercial or a piece of marketing collateral comes up for them, you know who it is almost before it even starts. Another example for the purchase side would be Starbucks because the buildings themselves, the places where they go to have the transactions have actually become almost a temple to the brand. You know, you really, really know what you're gonna get. You get the same flavors, you get a very similar ambiance and experience. They've invited their customers to come and sit and be in that space for long periods of time. So they're really enhancing that experience side. On the post-purchase side, which this is something really interesting is we're seeing some companies really move in this direction. This is where maybe it's a membership or something where they are creating a lot of interaction and support. Think of a company that's really known for their customer service. Zappos would be a great example of this. I know there's a conversation about a customer service rep that's been basically 12 hours on the phone with a client solving their problem, but then also just talking with them. They're really known for the experience. Once you buy from them and you have a good experience with that customer service, you're probably gonna be loyal. You're probably gonna recommend them again. You're gonna talk about them again. So that's how people use that and leverage that to really set themselves apart from the crowd. So here's a couple quick examples if you wanna think about this for your business. Activities that go into each area can be prospecting, advertising, maybe an email newsletter, and especially your website for a pre-purchase. Website could also go into this purchase as well, but if you have a retail location or an online store or a recurring revenue product, that could be your purchase experience right there. Other things that fall into this post-purchase category are things like community, customer appreciation, warranties, customer support and service, maybe blogs or continuing free education support to actually use the product or service. Those are things that fall into that. So this will kind of give you some ideas what you could put into each one of these categories. And the goal here is then to create your own pie and figure out where are you gonna put most of your time? Are you gonna be heavy on the post-purchase, pre-purchase, and purchase? Now, the thing about going through something like this is that when you do this, when you go through a model like this, you can actually get really, really strategic about why and how you're going to use your time, your resources, your team, and what are you going to be known for in your industry? So it can be really, really powerful. Hope you enjoyed this tip. This one was a little bit longer, but over the next several weeks, I'll probably drop you a few more you know, models in here that we use in the strategy sessions because I get a lot of people asking about them and really interested in them. So hope you found this helpful and we'll talk to you soon.